live, where news comes first. This is ABC7 Extra. Good evening. I'm Maria Garcia. Welcome to ABC 7 Extra. Tonight, a topic that affects our largest school district, EPISD's tax ratification election. Supporters say it's essentially free money to improve the largest school district. If you've been hearing about this and you're a little skeptical or you're not sure which way to vote, we're breaking down the information for you tonight. Answering your questions, EPISD Board President Dory Fennenbach and Board Member Susie Bird. You can email us your comments or questions to abc7extra at kvi.com. You can also reach us by phone at 496-1775. On Twitter, tweet me at MariaGABC7. Now, for your tweets to appear on the bottom of our screen, make sure you use the hashtag ABC7Extra. Well, the El Paso ISD essentially wants access to the state's golden pennies, but the district can't do it without your permission. EPISD is holding what we, what, we, what we told you earlier is a tax ratification election this month. Our education reporter, Ashley Rodriguez, has been following this, and she explains the district is hoping to get millions more in dollars in state funding just by swapping pennies around. Think of it like this. You usually spend $3 on lunch, $2 on a burger, $1 on a drink. But today you decide, what the heck, I'm going to spend $1.98 on my burger and $1.02 on my drink. Still $3. But because you swapped around some pennies, the government is going to reward you with millions of dollars. Sounds way too good to be true, right? Well, that's what's going to happen at EPISD if voters approve of the penny swap. So this was kind of like a reward for the, from the state saying, if you do approve this rate, we'll give you a little extra money. By extra money, Ross Moore means $9 million a year. If voters agree to take three pennies from the side of the tax rate that pays for debt and move them to the part that pays for day-to-day -day operations, it will trigger Texas's Austin Golden Pennies. Golden pennies are the specific cents of a tax rate that generate more state money revenue because they are weighted at a higher value than the rest. By doing this swap, it allows us to avoid uh, uh, going out and having a large bond um, election. The tax rate stays the same, about $1.24 per $100 of home valuation, which is in the interest of you, the EPISD taxpayer. But there are others who stand to gain as well. As president of El Paso's Federation of Teachers, Moore is looking forward to the raises administrators, faculty, and hourly employees will receive if the penny swap passes. This will make EPISD competitive. Right now, EPISD teachers are paid the least in the county, just under 50000 on average, a 2.5 5% raise with the penny swap means around $1,200 more in their pocket per year. These funds will be used for our students. Trustee Trent Hatch says $9 million extra in state money, plus the $5 million the tax generates here, means $14 million for continued summer enrichment programs, new musical instruments, buses, and digital content. Plus, middle school sports, science labs, and career technical education will all be expanded. This is a watershed moment. We just have to do the right thing and, and, and make sure that we're c voting in this TRE uh, for funds that are available at no impact to the community. It's pretty much free money, but first you have to make sure you're registered to vote, and the deadline is July 23rd. The election is August 22nd, and early voting begins August 10th. Ashley Rodriguez, ABC7. And joining us now is EPISD Board President Dory Fennenbach and Board Member Susie Bird. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Of course. Um, so l let's start with just the logistics of how this is going to work. You're essentially swapping money from the budget that goes to paying off your debt to the budget that handles operation and maintenance. So how can you assure voters that the budget that handles your debt will be okay, that it's okay to swap money from that budget and that you'll still be able to pay off your loans at the same rate and at the same timetable that you've been doing so far. We'll start with you. We were able to restructure our debt um, just like you would your, your home mortgage um, and uh, achieve a lower interest rate. So we actually now are, are in a situation where we have a, a tax surplus. And, and by the way, we're legally required to have a tax rate that covers our debt payments. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't be able to make a swap that would not cover our existing debt. So we have this, this, uh, this with this restructuring and the additional interest available or the, the additional uh, revenue available that we can then switch to the operations side 
and we can still actually pay debt off with operations dollar if we, if we chose to do so or if we needed to do so. Okay, so you can assure voters that you won't be paying more in interest for this debt in the future because of no, this. Right, it, there, it's a, they're fixed rates mm -hmm. um, and uh, the board of managers took um, advantage of a very favorable interest rate market and refinanced the bulk of that, uh, saving taxpayers millions of dollars and we're able to take advantage of it um, through this tax ratification election. Okay, now uh, from what I understand employees will not be receiving a raise if voters do not approve this. So. Uh, you already have some of the lowest paid teachers, teachers I should say, in the county. Is, is that prudent to say voters will decide whether you get a pay raise or not? Well, what's not prudent is to uh, pass a deficit budget. And uh, that was a situation that we were faced with. Uh, we have declining enrollment, which means declining revenue, and uh, growing needs in the district, uh, deferred maintenance not and, and facilities needs. And we recognize that we need to write the um, our position with t teacher salaries, and it's a priority. Uh, but it's going to take us some time. Uh, you know, we've only been in office now two two months, and so it's going to take us some time to to work through that, so that we are um, shifting those funds and making those priorities. Um, this is the first step in that direction, and it's just a first step. Okay. Now, if the district though has been dealing with declining enrollment for some time now, it, it didn't just happen overnight. Um, we know that the way to lure students and to lure families into EPISD is with excellent educational programs and excellent teachers. So shouldn't ha EPISD have been investing in its teachers long before this? I mean, I know they've been getting pay raises, but they're, they're not as significant as other school districts. Right. No, absolutely. I mean, I think if you look at sort of the magic of education, it's all in the classroom with the teacher. And so you need to have um, the most talented, the most qualified, the most educated teachers that you can in the classroom and teachers that are engaging the kids. And so it absolutely has to be a priority. We, you know, we can't speak to what happened in the past, but we certainly, um, I think as a board, have decided that it's an absolute priority that we make um, teacher salaries competitive. Um, because the other sort of downside of it too is that they also have some of the highest insurance costs um, mm -hmm. in, in the county. and so. Uh, we're, we're, we need to make some very significant progress on that. This is one step, um, and we'll continue to look budget after budget about how we can do that. You know, the starting salary for a first-year EPISD teacher with a bachelor's degree for the last school year, the beginning was $44,147. Uh, if the TRE measure passes, if voters approve that, that'll only go up about $800. It'll stay at about $44,940. So a 2.5% pay increase just doesn't sound like it will improve recruiting that much for EPISD when other districts are paying educators up to $48,000 for, for a starting teacher. Well, you also have to look at our tax rate, which is one of the lowest in the region. And, um, and that's, that's a choice that uh, we want to continue to support. So um, one option that we had was not just to, to ask for a penny swap, but to ask for a tax increase. And we made a, a decision that we did not want to do that, that we wanted to look within our own uh, operating budget to find the money to shift and prioritize towards teacher salaries. That's going to take us time to get there. But we're doing this without a tax increase. And so, uh, as I said before, it's just one step for now in the right direction. Okay. Uh, Joe tweeting at us. How many top administrators could be eliminated to save money? So the, the, the question always comes up, uh, are you stretching the dollar that you have now as much as you can? Sure. You know, I, I think through the last uh, two budget cycles that the Board of Managers had when uh, they were looking at, I think, about a $20 million deficit, they made very significant cuts in central office, eliminated positions. Um, and certainly that's what, something that we will look, um, look at going forward. Um, but right now, if you look at the, the ratio of administrative pay to the sort of district operations, where do, we have a, we're not paying too much for central office. That's always sort of the, the big question if you look at our peer um, districts. So I think there's always more that we can do, um, but, it, but it, it's a small part of the budget. And so really we have to look at everything um, uh, this next coming budget cycle. We, we've made a commitment to really start early. 
um, you know, to learn, you know, every aspect of the department and really start asking questions like, is that function something that we really need to do anymore? Um, where, where are our priorities and are we spending uh, on our priorities or, or are there things that are diverting from that? Okay. Uh, let's take a phone call from a viewer. Carlos on the west side has a comment. Hi, Carlos. What's your uh, question or your comment? The reason I'm considering not voting for this is I think you're trying to spread it too thin. If you'd have just taken some issues like pay raises and moved us up the list so we could compete, I think it would have been money wisely spent. You're trying to do too much, and I'm not sure you're going to accomplish what you should with the kind of money that you're getting. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, so the total will be about $13.8 million, uh, counting the state matching funds. Uh, and you're talking about uh, pay raises for hourly staff, about more than 3%, 2.5% for teachers, uh, expanding science labs, uh, s continuing the summer enrichment program, uh, new buses. Can, can, can about $14 million a year really pay for all of that realistically? It, no, it can't. And, and you make a good point that uh, w actually what this is is just a, an example of the needs that we have in the district. We have um, aging buses, we have equipment in, including um, musical instruments and other equipment and athletic equipment, for example, that needs to be replaced. Um, and we don't have the capital to do that. So. Um, it's not going to begin to cover it, and we don't necessarily have to to spend it all that way anyway. We, we, as I said, we could continue to pay off debt, accelerate our debt payments. We could put it into our reserve fund, which is low. Um, that we have not made those decisions, and so what we put out there was um, some uh, ways that we could spend the money. Um, and there's two parts of the money. There's the nine million that comes from the state that uh, is would be lost if the voters did not approve that. And that's nine million that the state approves that will go to another school district and will be lost to us. That would be really unfortunate for our community because it's designed for uh, property poor districts like El Paso. And in fact, four uh, school districts in our area have already taken advantage of it. So that would be money lost. Then the other five million is money that would be moved from uh, debt service to uh, operations. In my mind, that's the five million that we need to decide how and where that would be spent. Okay, Eduardo tweeting uh, something similar than, than Carlos's question. It seems EPISD is over-promising on $9 million a year, pay raises, buses, summer programming, technology, etc. cetera. Um, and, and when voters see things like this, I mean, it, it sounds like promises. It, it sounds like this is what we're going to use the money for, for pay raises, for buses, for technology. It doesn't sound like these are things we could use the money for, but we're still deciding. So, 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 so it's so right. it, you you see how it, it can it can sound a little disingenuous uh, to voters. We're absolutely committed to the salaries if the TRE passes. We've identified those areas of priorities, and I think that we will be able to make investments in all of those areas. However, we probably w you know, th th for example, buses is a, gr a great example. W one of the things you find if y when you when you when you have aging buses at a certain point, if you're not replacing them on a regular, you're mm -hmm. spending more mon money just keeping those old buses. So we, we, we need to start making investments, for example, in that area. Can we do everything that we need to do um, uh, w with this current um, budget if the TRE passes? Probably not, but we're going to make um, s some continued investment in those areas, in areas that really have been lacking for a while. Okay, um, and Eduardo tweeting, won't diverting funds from buildings and repairing schools allow for further disrepair? Uh, that's a great question. And um, one of the, the interesting things about the way the tax structure is is that you can use operating funds for buildings, but you can't use your debt service funds for operations. Mm -hmm. So just because we're going to move those monies over doesn't, doesn't restrict how we can uh, use the funds. So as we described earlier and as, as Susie articulated, um, we have m many more needs th than we can uh, fulfill at this moment. So one of our big challenges is prioritizing that and creating a, a strategy of how we can address them. This, this is just one small step toward, toward that. Okay, all right, we have to take a commercial break. When we come back, we're going to take more phone calls and tweets from viewers. You're watching ABC7 Extra. We're talking about EPISD, e EPISD's TRE, tax ratification election. You can call us at 496-1775. Email us at abc7extra at kva.com. Tweet me at Mar Maria G abc 7 or use the hashtag ABC7Extra. We'll be right back.
It's the motto year in sales event at Rudolph BW. Zero Welcome back. We're talking about EPISD's tax ratification election. And I want to get to a point that we talked about during commercial break, but that viewers didn't get to listen to, and that's that uh, these 14, upwards, of, almost $14 million, 13.8, uh, essentially you'd be getting them an allocation every year. So whatever you don't get to the first year, you say you could get to the second and third. Right. That's right. Yeah. So we'll get the $9 million from the from the state year after year, and it's not tied to enrollment. So um, as enrollment continues to decline, we can still count on that additional revenue to help, help offset that loss in revenue. Uh, and then as, as Susie mentioned, you know, having a longer term vision and plan of um, how we can address these needs. So, you know, we cannot do this in the next few months or even few years. We're going to have to look further out and, uh, and find other ways to um, build on the $9 million from, from now, which we hopefully will get. Uh, to, to address that. But the raises would go into effect the first year that you get that money? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So the only thing that we've actually decided as a board is on the raises. Okay. Uh, and, and then everything else are just uh, priorities. The things that we've identified that are immediate needs that we want to prioritize. Um, but how much and when we would spend that has not been decided. Okay. We have a tweet from Eduardo. What assurance will taxpayers receive that EPISD won't raise taxes for the loss of the INDES budget? So, so the um, current rate that we have that we lowered in order to go to the voters for the tax ratification election um, covers all of our debt payments. Um, what, what, what could happen in the future is if we were to go out to the voters and say we would like to pass a bond and the, the, the um, voters say yes, we agree with you, we think these are priorities, then that would impact that part of the tax rate. But the, currently the rate that we have is sufficient to cover our debt. Okay, all right, let's go to our phone lines. We have Barbara from the Northeast on the phone. Hi Barbara, what's your comment or your question? I don't have children that go to school I never had them, and I'm wondering how, if I vote for this, how will it affect me? That's a great question. Um, you know, the, the health of, of our schools affects our entire community. You know, we are committed to improving the quality of education for all our children, which builds opportunities for them and builds opportunities for our, our city. We need to raise the, the quality and level of our education, and that's going to build, uh, bring better jobs and build opportunities. Uh, that that raises the um, the standard of living for all of us, and um, even though you don't have children in the district, you do pay property taxes in some some sh some uh, way, shape, or form, whether through mortgage or uh, through rent rent payments. Um, and so, you know what you pay in taxes um, matters a lot, and you want to make sure that. Um, that money is being spent as efficiently and responsibly as possible, and that's what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the Border Plex Alliance presented a study it did to the City Council uh, this last week, essentially saying that the biggest hindrance for creating job growth in the El Paso region uh, was a lack of, of education, uh, that, that there was just not a steady pipeline of, of a skilled, educated workforce. So you can incentivize companies to come all you want, but if you don't have workers, 
workers with the skills that those companies want, then they're just not going to relocate here. And so uh, everybody's saying the way to tackle that is education and starting work to work with the school districts. Absolutely. And I, actually, and that's one of the reasons I ran for um, the school board, actually, in the first place. I, I realized from my eight years on city council, there's only so much you can do in terms of uh, economic activity um, uh, and incentives at the city, and really where all of our work at changing um, wages in our community is really going to happen in, in the classroom. And um, we need to ask ourselves, and in fact, in fact, it's a question we're asking ourselves right now, is what are we teaching in the classroom and what do children need when they leave um, uh, our classrooms? What do they need to be competitive in the workforce and are we preparing them for that? Um, and so th there's a lot of things that we need to do as a district and as a community um, to really make education um, at EPIC relevant for our students, engaging for our students, and something that when they leave us, we know that they're prepared. Um, and th just extraordinary amount of work to do in that. But I, I, I think it's going to be really important for the community to be engaged in that conversation and to help really hold us accountable for getting there. Okay. We have Sarah from the West Side on the phone. Hi, Sarah. What's your comment or your question? I want to know if um, any of these monies are going to be used to close down the schools that you were talking about last year. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to address that? Um, we are, I, I think it was about school closures. Yeah, if any of the money will be used to close down the schools that, that were being talked about in the facilities planning last year. Okay, no, I think that's a resounding no. Um, we, we do need to come back around to the facilities modernization plan, uh, and that will be starting uh, very quickly after we get past this, this, uh, this election. Our first priority was passing the budget, and setting the tax rate, and then holding this election. Um, we have uh, very serious needs in our facilities. Uh, we have to address de declining enrollment, and we have to right-size the district. And so we'll be tackling that next, but that will be separate and apart from what we're doing right now. Okay. Um, if voters don't approve this, the superintendent has said that Plan B would be to uh, possibly look at reductions. What kind of cuts uh, are we talking about here? Actually, the budget that we passed, um, I think, um, would accomplish what we need to accomplish. But if we do want to go back and look at some of those priorities, we would have to look at some, some restructuring or s some changes. But at this point, there's no plans to do that. Okay, all right. Well, we have to take a break. When we come back, we're going to get to more of your phone calls and your tweets. You're watching ABC 7 Extra. You can call us at 496-1775. Email us at abc 7 extra at kva.com or tweet me at Maria G. ABC 7. We'll be right back. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra. Tonight we're talking about EPISD's tax ratification election. Okay, so when people go to the polls, um, when you read the ballot language, it sounds like they're approving a tax increase almost. So, so to talk about what that ballot, ballot language uh, refers to uh, and, and what people will be voting for if they vote up or down. I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, that's an important point. Um, there, there's, as we mentioned, there's two tax rates. There's the INS side, which is the debt side, and there's the M&O, which is the maintenance and operations. Uh, we're going to be decreasing the debt by three cents, and we need to increase the um, maintenance, maintenance and operations by the same three cents. So it's a net zero impact. Mm -hmm. We only need voter ratification for the increase, so you won't see the decrease on the ballot. 
So if you go and, you, and you're, not, you're not aware, it will read like an increase. And I've been getting that question repeatedly, that if this looks like an increase, but it, it absolutely is not. We only need the ratification for the increase, and that's why it reads that way. Okay, so um, once they go, if they, if they vote yes, just to be abundantly clear, then they're voting for the penny swap and for the additional funds, uh, the additional state funds. And if they vote no, they're, they're voting, obviously, against the penny swap. Right. That's okay. All right. Uh, so, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, uh, $13.8 million a year, well, it is, it sounds like a significant amount um, in the overall budget. It, it's just, it's not a whole lot. So how can you really stretch that money? I mean, how, how are you going to ensure that you're, you're going to be a good steward of, of that money? Well, I, I think what you're going to see through the next budget cycle um, is a real rigorous review of all of our programs, what's working, what doesn't work. I'm a big believer that we should make sure that all of our, for example, all, all, everything happening in our classrooms should be uh, researched and evaluated and we know that it has an, a, a good impact on, on student improvement and achievement and so if things aren't working we don't want to fund them and so I think what you'll see through this ne next budget cycle is not only a look a, a very kind of clear look at what's happening in the budget where, where we can cut and where we can increase um, but also looking at sort of a five-year plan how 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 are we going to uh, plan out the next year, f five years of our budget, and really be thoughtful um, about what we can do, not only in terms of being good stewards, but also what, what we can do to dramatically um, improve the quality of education f for our students. And mo in, particul in particular, I'm very interested in looking at those student populations where we have the biggest gaps in achievement. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, Spanish speakers. What can we do to make sure uh, that we're closing that gap for them um, and we're making sure that they have the same recipe for su su success as every other student um, at EPSD. Okay, all right, let's go to the phone lines. JJ on the west side. JJ, what's your comment or your question? Liz, if you, if you get excess money, why can't you pay down the existing debt? And if you're going to give raises, are you going to get 3% more production from your teachers? Okay. Uh, so with extra money, why not pay down the debt even more? And will the increase in the pay for teachers also increase their productivity? So um, the option to continue to accelerate our debt payments is, is absolutely one, one um, alternative that we may choose. Uh, th the question is, with, with interest rates as low as they are, is that the best use of our money to, to accelerate those debt payments? or to use it to advance the education of our children in some, ha in, in some way. Uh, and, and those will be discussions that we have at the board level. We'll make that decision together. Um, and, and the second part of the question had to do with what? I, I guess he's referring to teacher accountability. How can you ensure that teachers, uh, their productivity is increasing uh, with, with the salary increase? Yeah. Um, you know, there are various models uh, for teacher accountability. Um, at the end of the day, it's really uh, our children uh, succeed in advancing and, and learning. Uh, and uh, as Susie said, I think you'll see m a much more rigorous uh, attempts to uh, e investigate and evaluate how our children are performing. Um, not through more testing necessarily, but um, just understanding what's happening in the classroom and um, the, the effect and, and then also what's happening upon graduation. Uh, I think we need to track what happens with our children after they leave EPISD. Mm -hmm. Are they uh, going to college? Are they prepared for some other uh, career, vocational opportunities? And are they staying in college? Uh, so, so we have a lot of work to do. We're going to be working with uh, community members and uh, higher education here locally uh, to, to find the right uh, way to evaluate that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, one more thing. I, I do think he's asking the wrong question about teacher salaries. Um, you, you know, the way I look at it, I'm a parent, I have kids um, in high school and going into, into middle school. I would like for my children to learn science from somebody with a bachelor's or master's degree in science. And if you look at um, the options that somebody has for a bachelor's or master's degree in science, and you look at what salaries there are, 
teachers are way underpaid. Mm -hmm. And so we can't, we, we're asking teachers to give up too much sometimes to be in the classroom in terms of having real competitive salaries um, based on, on the education that they've re received. And so I think there's a lot more that we need to do. If we want to really, really turn around student performance, I think we need to look for the best, the brightest, the most talented, the most educated teachers, and that's going to be paying more. Uh, and we've already heard that uh, some educators say they would they would like to apply at EPISD, and they're working at other districts locally, but they say they would have to take a pay cut to come to EPISD. Right. Um, Jay saying, I'll vote in favor as long as teachers and hourly employees get their raise and transportation gets new equipment. Uh, and that's from Jay, that tweet. Uh, and, and while I have you here, I, I want to ask about this. You know, there's been a lot of talk about um, having engaged board members. I think EPISD is sort of the uh, quintessential example of, of what happened, a lot of people say, when, when board members simply were not engaged and were not keeping administrators accountable or pro providing the proper oversight. Uh, and there's been a lot of talk about um, the Children's Hospital Board. Many community members uh, have been critical of, of that board and uh, its transparency and perhaps its oversight of, of the Children's Hospital. Uh, you've been on, on this board for two months now. Uh, what do you say to, to citizens who have become skeptical and a bit cynical about people who serve on boards? It's understandable, you know, I think that's probably the other half of why we're running, because uh, we were concerned as well, and um, I, I think we, we will continue to work hard to um, be responsive to our constituents, um, be available uh, to, to help people understand what we're doing and why we're doing uh, what we're doing, to make um, very thoughtful and deliberate, deliberate decisions that, um, that, that we can explain with reason and logic. Um, and, and we have systems that are designed and that we are um, going to continue to support and insist on that um, help uh, effectuate that oversight. Uh, for example, we have uh, an audit team that reports directly to the board that it used to report, right, report through to the, the superintendent. Right. And we're seeing uh, very clearly uh, that that needs to report directly to the board. Right, and you know, I, I think the other part of it too um, is if you look at kind of what was happening at the, sc the school district and what happened at some of the other school districts, people weren't paying attention. The media wasn't paying attention until it kind of, till it became very clear that things were falling apart. And if we look um, at education as an absolute priority, if the only way that we're going to fix our economy is in the classroom, then it's up to all of us to make sure that we're doing our job. It's up to the whole community. It's up to you. Um, to make sure that you're, you, you, we've got people at those board meetings, we've got reporters asking us tough questions. We want to make sure that the community is engaged in this process. Um, I, I think we've, you've got at the board a really strong pe team. They're really excited about the work. We're, we're very impatient to do lots of things right now. Um, but we w really want the community to be engaged in that process and to hold us accountable. When we don't do what we've said we're going to do, you hold us accountable. And I think the more people that are paying attention to that, the better our education will be. Okay. Uh, Jay tweeting, better pay for teachers and hourly employees gets better results for our children. Our children deserve the best. Hashtag ABC7 Extra. All right, thank you so much. Um, Eduardo tweeting, why not include panel members that oppose the TRE for more balanced reporting? Because we couldn't find any. <laughs> <laughs> because no one's speaking out ag against the TRE. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank we appreciate much. it. And thank you for joining us here on ABC 7 Extra. We hope you found this informative, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.